Welcome back. Hi. I had no quirky introduction this time around. I'm failing you as a play-by-play yeah, -play caster. One job, okay, Toby. Give, give, me, give me a quirky introduction. How, how would you say hello to everyone? Like, come on, Kyle. I gotta teach you hey, guys. Skills. Hello, and welcome back. I'm Kyle, joined here by the one and only Toby Wan. We're oh, going to bring hi, you everyone. game two of the Group C losers match between the final tribe and Mineski. It's a little harsh calling them losers. They're only losers for now. One team will certainly win, one team will certainly lose. Yep. And I can tell you that with confidence because I'm analyst Kyle and I know what the hell I'm talking about. Thank you, Kyle. You are absolutely amazing. I really, yeah. You gave me flashbacks actually to like. What? Yeah, so w when I, we've got some time because we actually haven't launched yet uh, because we're not in the game yet. Uh, I'm going to tell you a story. Uh, when I first started casting, when I first started casting, okay. there was Listen. one thing that we did to try and... I'm that was my story listening position. I'm going to tell you all a story. When you started casting, there was a script to follow. Mm -hmm. So when you started, you had to say, Hello, my name is Team A versus Team B. Game whatever of whatever. Competition. And I think at the end of that was like sponsors and some kind of quirky transition on. And you had to repeat every single time. So if you listen to any of my early casts, you could be listening to exactly like it would be it'd sound exactly the same Whose as every single star. Was that? It was a script that was written by a bunch of guys from GameStar um, who believed that uh, being consistent was important. Mm. Yes, because if anything makes the same game and the same heroes more interesting, it's to ensure that every introduction is done the same way. You know, if we were still doing that, how would we actually tell the weekends apart? We don't. What's it, the tournament's in a different country? That's about it. You can ask me like, what game? Dota. Like, what's your favorite moment you remember from a game? I'm sorry, they're all the same. Let's go to the draft. This Please. hopefully won't be the same. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we can finally get our ugly mugs off, off screen as well. Uh, Yay! There we go. There we go. <laughs> Silence into yay. All right, so Mineski. Yep. This looks very familiar. <laughs> Indeed. Although um, TFT is first pick this time, so they swapped. Yeah. Seems like first pick is valued, um, and then the second priority almost always chooses Radiant. <laughs> yeah, it was a Jibuki choosing Radiant. Yeah, you're right. Wow. They actually chose it. I, I double-checked. I well, double-checked your facts. I, I feel like you wouldn't do this if you trusted me, Toby. I'm sorry. Do you want to do a trust fall live here on camera? No. <laughs> Definitely not. You're Australian. I know how this works. Yeah, it's true. I'd play for the clip of Carl falling on his back. Mm -hmm. See, this is what I like. This is um, my first comment to start this game would be TFT, they couldn't do anything. Then They, they had no ability to actually capitalize on an advantage or make plays they could smoke gank but what's the move you know it's pray they walk into a favorable team fight but yeah. disruptor now you got punishment exactly and if you replace the witch doctor with the disruptor in that last draft you actually have the tools to make things happen mm -hmm. you know you force enemies to buy bkb disrupt like you can build around this yeah. it works one of the greatest combos yeah. we saw with disruptor was the axe as well as exactly. disruptor yesterday and we saw we saw um who is it playing um TNC was yes. able to 2-0 Evil Geniuses, mostly in part to some incredible disruptor play by the man Cuckoo. I shouldn't have read Twitch chat. Why? I read one comment. It shattered my confidence completely. Oh, that's a It was a good comment, though. I give him props for it. They're like, I hope he makes it big in PUBG. <laughs> hey, we're well, Fortnite now. For True. I don't really know how you would commentate on that. It's like, oh, he's building a wall made of wood, steel, wood, a block. Oh, <laughs> he jumped 360. <laughs> wood, steel, wood, 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 steel, yeah. steel, steel, wood, 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 wood. Exactly. <laughs> Night Stalker Luna. I love uh. the Night Stalker pick. This is something that uh, both Mineski and Final Tribe were first doing. I hate that pick. That is not the play. Fourth pick, Life Stealer, was very nice, okay? It was the same scenario. Uh. Last game, Final Tribe, open Luna. Mineski, fourth pick, Lifestealer. You can't second pick it. 
This hero is so easy to deal with. You know what I wish we had? I wish we had a close-up camera just on your face that could just be there throughout the entire draft so you at home could experience what I experienced sitting here next to Kyle. Where it's from ultimate happiness to, oh no. <laughs> it's just not good. The reason it was good was because neither support and neither core that Final Trap had selected did a damn thing to Lifestealer. Mm -hmm. But when you pick it here, all of a sudden, you know, it's not really meta, but say a Wyvern, right? Yeah. That open wounds target that Lifestealer Rage is on, it's just put down. He's fine. Um, any save, any yeah. peel. Why don't you just get something like an SD? An SD who combos yeah, with the Luna is able to, like, save that target. They're banning out the Bane, I'm assuming, because that's at least a guaranteed can pierce the immunity mm -hmm. that is the Lifestealer with Fiend's Grip, but it may not even be necessary. It's not just that, like... There's so many heroes that just crush life. They've been Omni. Okay. Yeah. Abaddon is in the pool. Um, hmm. Ice like, loves yeah. that. Heroes like TA, CK, like they crush a life stealer. Probably won't yep. see a CK in this game, but. Yeah, the, the, T, the TA yeah. as well as the Abaddon are definitely still options for Mineski mm -hmm. as far as fitting into their laning phase. And then they just need to save here. That's all. Save slash aggression. And Purge is what also kites the life stealer. Like. You can't do damage. Like, you remember the meta when life seals had to keep buying blink daggers because they couldn't close the distance mm -hmm. fast enough. That's what I feel like when you pick up a, a life seal this early on. It's just going to happen to you. Yep. And you leave them. Uh, they're susceptible to an OD too, just because of the save. As yep. You said like it's just if you can peel or save your teammate that life stealer's targeting. It. It's the same way you'd probably deal with the zombie invasion, right? But imagine all the strength of like a hundred rabid zombies is put into one life stealer, okay? You uh -huh. don't want to go attack him with a baseball bat. He's going to just eat you, all right? But if you can close the door on his face, lock the door for a second, buy and, yourself and, time and to have get the to the second <laughs> story, that little, uh, what's it called, the ramparts, you know, running across with a shotgun, then when you bust down the door, you got him. Sorry, are we back to Fortnite now? What's I don't it, know. Is this door made of wood, wood, metal, metal? <laughs> Man, I don't even know where I'm going. I like the Wind Ranger. Again, uh -huh. How do you attack him when he wind runs? This is yeah. a hero that has an ability to save himself from a life stealer. A shackle shot, four seconds stun all of a sudden out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Very good at harassing him in the early game. You buy an orb of enemy, hit him for 60. Life stealer, two base armor. It's not the uh, save that we were talking about. So mm -hmm. this is the, it's the only downside for Mineski where if you do get that jump from the final tribe, that's going to be problematic. But where's your delivery system? Like, well, you are going to rely on Disrupt a Glimpse back into the wall. That's going to work pretty nicely against heroes like Windrunner who wants to run away. So it has some sync there. But normally you're looking for someone that's going to push that life seal to the front lines. We saw SK in the previous game banned out the very beginning by final tribe. So what is it this time around? Uh, are we going to go like uh, Kuro kind of style, transport Ricky? I don't think so. But hey, we can dream. You never know. Like they can always go for mm -hmm. something random. I, I think that the the core Mineski, I think they'll end up playing with an Abaddon or an OD, possibly even both. But you uh -huh. don't need to rely on your support to save, especially when it's something like a Wind Ranger, which ja they already proved like, hey, put Ninja Boogie on this rotating while still a five. It's the one. It's the playmaking support. The same thing last game, the nice talk of this game. Let Jabs just hit this Life Stealer in the face, and that you're going to slow him down considerably. Ogre! I, I don't like this at all. <laughs> I don't, I mean, we'll see what they end up doing. I, the, the, He's the second, the last two picks for TFT have got to be something special here. This is a great it's, OD it's, game, great Abaddon game. It's got to make sense as well, like, because what's the ogre meant to do here? Like, I, I'm not seeing jump initiation to come from the supports. I'm seeing... No nice delivery for the life stealer. N yeah, no, no delivery from the life stealer to come from support. So it has to be in sync with another core, which means maybe now we should start thinking about the off lane for the final tribe. Uh, is this actually when you push the life stealer to that? <laughs> do we go full Havorst? Do you actually run that four position life stealer off lane? No, no. I hope not. <laughs> well, Lycan's been able to be doing that recently, so... Not the same, Toby. Not the same. Not the same. I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to work it out. You're, you're trying. Like, you, I understand I'm, I'm you're all about the hard. ambitious crossovers. Yeah. But we're going from zombies to werewolves. All right. They're not the same. They can. They don't have the same abilities or strengths. I'm sorry. I only know mafia. Oof, I, I don't know werewolf. I like the tide. Same concept. Uh, strong team fight initiator. 
the mm -hmm. uh, what's it called? The anchor the, smash. The anchor smash gotcha. goes through the raid for the damage reduction. You don't care about the ogre spells because you eventually get them cleansed, and you have this big team fight turnaround. Great synergy with the Luna. Even if Disruptor pulls you back, like you can probably mm -hmm. tank through a lot of that that storm yeah. and still get your ulti off. So they don't have a, a lockdown control. For a moment, I thought like Bonesky may consider going for something like a Doombringer, but now it just seems they believe they can yep. bleed out the initial abilities and then pop Ravage, yep. as opposed to just starting with the Ravage. Yeah, you want to. Um, it's just great with the Luna too, because you can kind of just walk down lanes. You buy an HOD on Tide most likely, or you just go full team fight items. But you get TFT. They're all about amplifying the damage of their cores and counting on that to like you you can reduce the damage output of the tft's lineup right now mm -hmm. to effectively nothing and then all of a sudden your luna is just king or queen rather um i like od for mineski i like ta and i like quap i think that's all the heroes that they have like thinking about right now maybe even alina but not a huge fan if you're tft i'm not really sure where you want to go here you could theoretically yeah. pick uh ta yourselves but i'm not a fan you need something that synergizes with the Ogre Magi. SF could be good. TA. Uh, yeah. I don't know what you do here. Without knowing Mineski's pickup. So they go for the Axe. Uh, there's at least your jump in core control. You, uh, that's a lot of melee. you got to ban OD if you're TFT now. Mineski will auto pick that and yeah, it's, save it's, right it's, now. It's the, mu the, the Mushi go to hero yeah. as well. And he, uh, you talk about the save, like I was talking about like SD to imprison to save. Now you just have Astral in prison. Mm -hmm. Like that'll instantly make it so Final Tribe has to switch a different target and you can go highly maneuverable with Blink and Force Stuff if you want to into, into Mushi. Yep. And then it's all up to the Queen of Scots to just carry everything else through. I'm That's curious Luna, to see Luna is a Scottish woman. I don't I just don't know what they're gonna pick here. For the last one, for final yeah, tribe, you need you need a, this last pick. Hero's got to do a lot. He it's the, the mid, they they, the pick, era they hero. picked before Maneski too. Yep. <laughs> so Zeus was the ban by Maneski. Yep. They feared a tinker. It's also a very good hero against OD. Mm -hmm. Or sorry, w would be the with the perfect tempo controller. Mm -hmm. They don't fear the tinker rather, but it's another option for Maneski is tinker. Zeus is quite good against a lot of the options that they have right now. Um. And it solves the damage issues for TFT, which they yeah. have still. Like they have, they have absolutely zero AOE. They have no team fight right now, and they, they see actually they banned the tinker yeah, as well. As soon as the, the Zeus telegraphs, hey, <laughs> we might be thinking about tinkers. So. But really, they're thinking about OD. You exactly. banned the, you banned the Zeus, so they actually banned the tinker. So then you can pick up the OD. Yep. But then Final Tribe, what do you get? Like, can they? I, I actually can, think can you they pick block OD. pick it. I think you they pick OD. Pick yeah. Okay. And the answer is Medusa. Oh God, this is dude. <laughs> Uh, five, four, <laughs> three, two, uh, one. It seems really, really good now for Mineski to play the OD. The great hero against the Dusa. They could invoke her. They but could. That's like try hard. Okay, and um, I've I've talked with some C fans. They're like, Moon Invoker is a meme. <laughs> like they like don't do it. <laughs> they say Mineski loses. All right, and all the Filipino fans of Mineski just put their heads they, they they face palm hard because you can't you don't buy the the moon invoker yeah. i'm sorry you know what's really missing is obviously just the techies like mm -hmm. the moon techies that's what they need just do it <laughs> okay they they could be considering dp as well just to have a little more tempo but mm. dp would have more sustain against any like you wouldn't be able to kill mm -hmm. with the rotation like that's never you'd never be able to kill him with a rotation yep they also lost to VGJ with DP and OD against Medusa, but... Uh, Timbersaur? What? <laughs> okay. What? And it's a moon Timbersaur as well. Against Mystic Snake? Against, like... I, I suppose the only real what? threat is the removal of mana, and then Disruptor kind of wrecks you too. Hang on. What? Lifestealer crushes Timbersaur. Um... Mm. And now, if they want to, like, get Final Tribe, like, you just throw Arrow. Like, you, you can throw the Lifestealer into the mid lane if you want to do this. There's nothing that stops Arrow from just running the, safe lane Medusa. The problem, it's just, yeah, exactly. And it's such a slow draft from Mineski. Like, you're, they're a bunch of watermelons. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's only one real watermelon in this game. Well, you can't see it because he's covered it with just his, his diving mask. 
I, I, at a certain point, Medusa just kind of wins the game. I feel, but yeah. I mean, they have a life stealer too. Like their their draft can get out of control. Um, I don't. I mean, Timber's not like a game losing pick necessarily, but I feel like it certainly complicates Mineski. And much like the previous game where Mineski just could play so much faster just by the nature of the hero, their hero's kits. They got the two, opposite this time. They do at least have, like, there's two great front liners. Like, you've still got the tight hunter, you've still got the Timbersaw. Like, they can just front line and, let, and let Medusa Mushi do man. all the work. What, you're going to run up and front line, sure, but Medusa's just going to hit you. What's your threat for a Medusa this game? Yeah. Yeah. I do not know. We have the same questions about Mineski's draft this game as we ended up having for TFTs during the last game. It felt like it started good, but then wonky at the end. But that's why we watched the landing phase all come to fruition. TFT is trying to get a good start off, so they're going to smoke up. So before we run through our lanes, we'll, uh, we'll see how TFT is able to handle this. And the line is drawn to move over to the left and then go down. So they're looking for the safe lane of Mineski. Mushi and Jabs are down here for that. And they at least get some aggressive warding options, so Hans can up on the hill already blocks the camp. And Jabs is in the best position to actually watch that movement from the west. And in fact, Smoke's gonna break. And he sees him. The ping comes out, they understand they're hiding and there's scribbles all over the jungle. All right, we can check out our lanes now and see what's gonna go on because everyone's backing off. So Unison Farm's running all the way north. Uh, he will be playing the ax. Uh, Medusa will be in the mid, uh, played up by Era, and that leaves the aggressive trialing for TFT. Yep. It's Frost Huntskin as well as Pablo all together. They'll be going against the safe lane of Luna as well as Wind Ranger. Puts mid lane as the Timbersaur of Moon. Then up towards the north is Ninja Boogie, roaming Night Stalker, and Ice 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 as the Tide Hunter with the great thumbs up Tide yep. scribble on the ground. I like this decision. Axe. Wait, what? Oh, he's, he's, he's doing it so we can block. He deep piece of the tier one tower so we can block. All right, sure, why not? I like the, uh, Puts I like the, the axe still. first tie. Um, I think Medusa wins this matchup mid, and he's also the win condition hero for TFT, especially when you add Nogra to the mix, and I like their decision to try lane because Luna, very XP dependent carry, and while they might not win the lane, they should at least trade They've that They've already bottom. switched it. So they're, wow, actually, they're, they're TPing out. Like Disruptor's already leaving. So it's just Tidehunter on the bottom lane now. And Disruptor's yep. up on top. And Unison Farm begins his TP out. Now, Mushi still, yeah, Mushi still has his TP. Uh, Tidehunter does not. Yeah, they're all just TPing. That's why TPing to swap lanes isn't really effective. Because the enemy team likes that matchup. They just follow you. Yep. And Jabs is doing that harassment you were talking about. It's that early attack, you got the Orb of Venom on the Wind Ranger. You actually got Hanskin dropping real low behind the tower. Jabs has Wind Run so he can dive underneath the tower, and that's exactly what he does. Keeps the pressure on Frost, and then they move over towards Hanskin. This should be maybe first blood, there's just not enough damage. Down to 28 HP. Hanskin is munching on Bark at the moment. So he will get to survive. And then Jab starts his runaway on the top lane. And Moon is actually body mid lane. I did not expect this to go this way. Well, how is that lane meant to work? Like, once you Mystic Snake, what other harassment do you really have against a Timbersaw? You uh, can't physically harass him out the lane. The Deuce doesn't have enough to well, work with. It, and it's just about last hitting. I don't like that he's going to kill it. Cool. I think you just get a double Wraith Band and you just Ice 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 is so baiting that one. The Shackle is out. They're holding units of farm position with only Ice 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 to hit into him and the Lucent Beam. They keep their range going and Jabs. What a great way to do a lane did, rotation. Wait, Ice 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 now TPs towards the top lane and they kill off the axe on the bottom. Did they TP back like again? They just waited for TPs to come off cooldown yes, and go back? Okay. That's exactly what they did. Lunar actually never used her TPs at the beginning, so they were ready to go. So yeah, terrific movement. And now Live Sealer comes to the bottom lane. Axe goes to the top. So at least they make the most out of this lane rotation. But the tide's up at level three, two points up in crack, and I'm not quite certain the axe is going to be uh, as effective now. Especially when Wind Ranger can just begin her rotation too. Mm -hmm. He also didn't go the Battle Hunger build because he was landing against a melee. So he's going to be a lot less effective if he's landing against anyone other than Tide. Nice talk is on bottom. Trouble for Mushi. Great initiation from TFT. They're able to find that kill. Jabs. 
never really found the opportunity to get the shackle off. So all they had to do was just open wounds and hold the Lunar in position. Yep. Super simple. Yeah, I'm expecting rotation to come out once Ice 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 is finished on this top. Just bring the Lunar up to the north and we just keep this lane rotation going. Actually, no. She TPs down the bottom lane. They want to keep going with this. There's I'm a big sure. creep wave pushing yeah. underneath the tower, so maybe they're trying to do something with that. I, I don't know if I like it too much. I think Ogre Lifestealer need levels a lot less than Luna Windranger do. And I also don't think that they're going to win this tri lane. And you're going to be happy with this if you're TFT. Yeah. Then again, you won't be happy with middle lane. Moon's actually diving underneath that tower. Timber chained in. He's got two points up in reactive, so it's only a 1 1 to harass Era down, but uh, he was caught with his shields down. Mm. That's why Era took so much damage there. Uh, Maybe happy to do that considering he's going to burn his salve anyway. You can see Era's going for the Wraith Band now, but I really wish he'd gotten one before the Achilles because you can get it up faster and. Um it, it just you just want to keep buying items and just last hit. You spam snake off cooldown, not to care about harassing Timber, but just to remove his mana pool. And he's yep. just trying to outlast it. But. Oh, top lane with the gush. Ice Ice Ice. <laughs> Taunt runs towards Unison Farm. Such a clown. I like what he's doing too, keeping lane control to ensure that Axe can't play super aggressive, just running out of a three play account. Yusuf Farm was baiting this. That's, he baited three times with the call. And Ice 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 can finally get the Anchor Smash off. He'll have to salve underneath his own tower. Battle Hunger will cancel that pretty quickly, but he got enough of the duration out. TFT's looking for another kill on bottom lane. They want Mushi, but they won't find him. The creep wave pulled off to the side by Jabs. They can look actually towards, yeah, actually, yep, there it is. Shackle over on Hanskin with a Lucid Beam range. They bring in the damage to kill off Disruptor. I was going to say, it's nighttime now, so all of a sudden the Night Stalker is actually a big problem. Uh, daytime, pretty garbage, but now that he's up level three, you have a Luna Wind Ranger, like, it's just so easy to land a kill using spells. Ninja Boogie's dead. Six charges? Actually, maybe not. Yeah, maybe so. Glimpse him back up again, the Shackle, keeping Lifestealer in position, but thanks to Hanskin, the kinetic field does not allow the Night Stalker to run away. Mm. Now, this is what you're looking for, though, if you're mid lane, right? Now the Timber's out of mana, so he's no longer a threat. He can just yeah. cast a spell with Soul Ring. Sure, you don't really care. You're just going to keep spamming Snake and try and get as many last hits yeah. as possible. Uh -huh. Like, the Soul Ring's still enough, though. You can get uh, both the Timber Chain as well as the Whirling Death off with one charge. So if you want to get aggressive, you don't have Chakram, but... Okay, bottom lane, Ninja Boogie, again being initiated on, but the back lines, they're looking at the Disruptor. Support for support is at least the easy trade-off yeah. that Maneski can get. You're going to kill the Disruptor, but it's a hell of a lot harder to kill a Ogre Lifestealer. <laughs> Lifestealer has 1,200 health with just treads. He's level 4. Yeah. It's kind of funny, like, that they, they know which ones they can kill. You can't kill Wind Ranger. Okay, then Ogre can't die. Sure. So it just makes sense for just the even trades. Titan has level six, and I'm wondering now, like also Ice Ice Ice's rotation, units of thumbs are rotation. Can they actually change this bottom lane up? Can you get into position? Warding wise is pretty defensive from uh, from TFT. They got the observer ward watching the bottom rune, so you can't wrap around the bottom. Mm -hmm. But you, like, that's exactly what Ninja Boogie's now doing with this illusion rune. I'm surprised Era didn't pick it up. He just saw it and didn't walk at it. It's very weird. Yeah, he was baiting. Trying to look like an illusion, but he uh, most definitely was not. So Ninja Boogie has to run back up the river, but that's why Moon already creep skipping, adding pressure into this T1 tower. While they got the catapult there, why not? I like this decision too. Just tank the tower. You don't take any damage. He's got 20, 20 reactive armor charges up right now, maxed out. That's the right move. Actually, so if Ira does come down, he can get shackled. Like, Jabs is in the tree line. Pablo's nearby, but they are so cautious about this. Here's the farm on top. There's your time to ravage. Rotation came from Mushi instead. The axe call is out for support. Arrived from Ninja Boogie. The Lucent Beam from Mushi can get that kill, and Ty can head to the bottom lane. Yep. And this tier one tower yep. mid is gone. I did not expect this matchup to be so timber favored, but it's now knowing this and also just looking once again at the damage output of TFT. 
he really won't be able to kill these watermelons until much later into the game, especially since he's behind. I thought Aero would have a great game, early mask into the Pike Scotty, you know, whatever he wants to buy, really, because he's not threatened necessarily by, by Maneski's damage output, but that kind of goes both ways, because he, he's just tickling Timbersaw, and no yeah. one on his team can really help him kill him. I think they're also very concerned about the about the gangs. Like, you look at top lane, Ninja Boogie and Jabs is up here. The Observe Wars behind the tower. Now, you've just hit daytime, so Nine Socket nowhere near as effective, but... Then they just move over. The Void, it's just a slow down Hansigan so Jabs can get in position so he can get the Shackle out. Perfect combination when you get the Loser Beam, the damage arrives, and Boom was even ready to come up and do the work once more. They, they're looking for yeah. Frost. He TP'd up here, and now he's isolated. They have another Shackle off cooldown a couple of seconds time, but then again, they may just have to damage. Everyone's there, use the Lunar Blessing, beat the crap out of a live stealer, yep. and then take the T1 tower to Boom. Yep. And this is, this is where the Timber Factor comes in, because when he rotates this Max that reactive armor, he just tanks the tower. It's eight minutes in. You cannot kill Timbersaw. It is impossible. Unpossible? Yes. Okay. Because it's Dota, uh, you, so it's always somewhat now? possible. Like, are, are you calling the impossible? Impossib it, impossible. Nothing is impossible in Dota. I've learned that uh, long ago. Winnable, unwinnable games are only temporary. You never know if someone might just run down mid. No. Tier 1 tower on the top is gone. This is now two Tier 1 towers dropped already of TFT before the 10-minute uh, mark. And Moon's not giving up. Like, he's keeping the pressure there. And Disruptor, level 4, 9 minutes in, does not have what he really wants to have to try. No, he needs level 6 before they can try and do anything about this Timbersaw. And even then, I'm still uncertain about it. And at least Axe is able to bring in this stack, but Ice Ice Ice, okay, they got the Gush off. Jabs runs in close, they just need to slow onto Unison Farm. The Gush, actually not enough work. So as Pablo through the back lines, but Ice Ice Ice, he doesn't care. He's got Gush off cooldown right now with the power shot down to 18 HP. Unison Farm, one more will do it. Meanwhile, Disruptor will die up on the top lane. It was the Life Stealer, unable to really help him out. Moon and Mushi just, okay, yeah, they don't care. I like this play from uh, from Mineski, playing the Luna with the Timber Saw, so Luna can continue to accelerate, grabbing the runes, killing towers, and Timber now just goes bottom. He'll probably do the same thing and just take this tier one for free, just because you can't touch him. Yep. Meanwhile, Luna continues to get stronger and stronger. ISIS Ice, Ice Ravage is back off cooldown, so if, if TFT do want to try and take a fight down here, they know they'll lose. They cannot fight into Ravage, and they cannot kill off Moon. Any, yeah, it's a it's a sad day right now for TFT. I I don't know their answer to damage either because it's not coming from Frost. Frost is trying to build into an Arblet, but in the time he's taking to do this, Maneski is forcing more and more towers. They even have the Observer Ward from Ninja Boogie. They're holding onto. If they put that on the hill, they'll see exactly where Era is right now. So they jump in further forward. Ravage Tides holding it for now. Just him to stop. Yeah, okay. The call came out. That's what he was waiting for. Hits a three man anchor smash. Frost will arrive. Open wounds onto Ninja Boogie. And well, now takes to the hills over away. And Frost, there's no damage again. This anchor smash is so easy to pump out every four seconds. He just triggers the soul ring. Nice call from Unison Pump, but then shackled up. All they have to do is hit power shot, but they get the kill on the Timber Saw. They managed to get through him. It took five heroes to do it. They glimpse back jab. He win runs to dodge a little bit, but the dunk is available. And that's why I said it was impossible, not impossible. Because it's Dota. Toby. It's Dota. A little deep there. They did not expect the full five man rotate, but Mineski doesn't feel super bad about it because Mushi had no intentions of ever showing up at that fight, and he was just farming top in the woods the whole time. I'm wondering though if this is still what they needed to do. Like if they grouped up as fight with the Ravage with with Mushi, yeah. they could have just wiped out all the towers on the bottom. So yeah, you get a mask of madness with a farm, but Mushi's also spending a lot of time inside the jungle. Unison farm, I think he's yeah, he's actually dead. They silence him up, so there's no call, there's no bonus armor. And uh, goodbye. Normally. I think uh, I agree with you. I think Maneski actually makes the right move, though. I don't want you to bring the Luna, especially when you he has no ulti. But you just back. They got a little kill horny there, and they're blowing the Ravage, and instead of just backing away, they're staying under the tower, playing around this in-between Tier 1, Tier 2 area. You make it so value for TFT, they find that first kill, Dude. and thanks to the Disruptor Factor, you get the second two. They're so aggressive. Uh, they're shipping in towards mid lane. They're going to wrap all the way around the mid lane, Ice 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 will be the bait, and he just got 
Oh, actually, Great yeah, move. he just got information on Eero. So you think they're going to attack the bottom? They attack the mid instead. Mushi comes in with the Eclipse, and he just rotated yep. in from the Dire Jungle. So they still get the tower, they still get the kill. And now they also get information over on Hanskin. Units of Farm coming out for the fight. The power shot cleans through. And Moon, well, you know he's looking for this. Perfect shackle, perfect rock down. Ninja Boogie will die because the TP's out towards the shrine, but the shrine has no charge. So Mineski, very confident to fight this. Bushi, like, he's playing Eternal Envy Star right now. Like, I, I farm up towers, I farm up creep waves. Yep. I don't even care about the rest of my team. And I forgot, Moon's Timber is legit. I would argue he's the best, maybe second best behind Miracle. And, uh, I mean, Ice is a great one, too. It's hard to say, but Moon's Timber is nuts, even since his days on WG Unity. Um, that's actually how he beat us at the Boston Major with this incredible Timber mid that never died. So um, probably part of the reason. They also had just lost with OD, so I, I don't mind it. Um, TFT's coming for a fight. They don't have the jump initiation of a Blink Dagger yep. on the Axe. They don't even have Stone Gaze on the Deusa, so tight. He yeah, he has Ravage. I'm really uncertain about this. Pablo, Shackle on the back lines. Moon starts to run away. 17 reactive armor charges kick in to give him a lot more life. And now Rage is gone. Infest is up, but they're burning through Era. He's down to one quarter of his matter on Unison Farm. Faking out the call. There's Ninja Pookie putting the board down. All the information in the world. And Luna is <laughs> getting involved. They're farming up the triple stack of Ancients. Ice, Ice, Ice and Mushi together. And now it's up to TFT to actually come into the kill zone of Mineski if they want to try and stop him. They're also they're making the critical error of fighting into Timbersaw. Rule number one of playing Timber, play away from him. Glimpse, they found him. Storm back onto him. But you've got reactive armor charge. It's not enough to keep him alive, however. So Timber will fall. Mushi is now finally okay. finishing up the Ancient stack. It's just not it's, worth it. It's 200 gold each for TFT for the kill on two. Uh, it the just, it's the second time they have to rotate five, though. It, it, it's nice. I'm not going to take it away from them. Yeah, they get that kill, but I'm sure that ancient stack's worth just as much. And the concern they you got, have... They got Mech for the Tundra from it, and they got yep. the Yasha for the Luna. And you, you just it's just never really worth it to kill Timber. You want to play keep away. If he goes bottom, go farm top, and vice versa. But issue with TFT's lineup is they don't have the wave clear. Huge <laughs> cheeky bum ninja boogie. They're actually going to get three out of the four 15-minute bounty reach because he was able to avoid yep. and then get in front of Unison Farm. And I really like, I just like the way Mineski's played this. You know, keep the Luna accelerating. He showed up to a couple fights, but he has only died the one time in the laning phase. And other than that, he's had a free game. And this mm -hmm. is the dream for Luna. Uh, Unison Farm, yeah, Night Stalker was there to steal your bounty room. Means he was in the neighborhood. He did not back up. Now Ice 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 with Ravage still available. Is looking at the kill. Unison farm, TP out, won't happen. Moon can just shred him apart. Luna's moving up, so is Jabs. Throw on the sentry, looking for any kind of defensive vision from TFT, but it does not exist. Instead, Frost, okay, yeah. Takes the takes the troll and runs out. Man, Iris had such a poor game. I'm, I really think a lot of it comes down to the lane, losing that tower in, my, what, six, seven minutes? That's what it gets the timber to the position he was in. All you got to do is if he, he he's only farmed this triple area of dire bottom shrine like but, twice. But again, is, is this going to be on the core or is this on the support that can't rotate in and stop such an activity? Like you, you had a timber just sitting behind the tower and no way to stop it. And you know Medusa takes time before he's going to get powerful. Uh, maybe. I, I don't know. I, I really didn't think Medusa would be pressured that hard. I could just be reading the matchup incorrectly, but... I, I don't think you should need an ogre with you to just keep the timber off, but seems you do. I mean that's what they, I mean it was last picked, so that's probably just something they understand. Like again, we said TFT had issues with damage, and they just picked another hero that's nigh impossible to kill without significant magic damage. And if you look at the heroes of TFT, they don't have any. Yeah. Uh, it takes five to kill timber, and I expect that'll be the answer. The whole game is just blow everything on him. But now he's got a bloodstone. Mushi's getting super fat. You're always going to have a Tide to back you up. Yep. And that backup comes in the form of just a Ravage Stun, which you, you don't really itemize against. Like, you're not going to be building a BKB on an Axe. You don't build a BKB on a Dusa. And Lime Stealer, every single time, Ice 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 can just survive the Rage duration anyway. So it's almost like you get a guaranteed four-man Ravage from Ice 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 once he has a maneuverability item, but he's not even going that. He's, he's going in for the Medallion. Onto the Tide Hunter, and there's your Blink Dagger on the axe. So hey, at least you've got that. 
You got Hanskin's control. Actually, maybe that's the pressure point for TFT. What can Hanskin achieve? Disruptor was their early pickup. Or praising it because it actually gave them a chance to punish. Or at least initiate. But now Moon, okay, he just scouts out Frost, plays yeah. defensive around the tower, and it's the same position as the tier 1 tower in the mid. It's, oh, it's actually it's the tier 2 tower in the mid. They wrap around the back, they go for the dunk, so it's a quick, long duration silence onto the live stealer. Perfect control, perfect movement, easy Great kill. move, and that's the benefit of having a Timber. The previous smoke in that mid lane to find Medusa, Timber was behind the tier 2 bottom. Now he's behind the tier 2 top, and you give so much vision to your team, because you can play so offensively, it's either sack the waves and the tower or show in the timber lane. And Lifestealer does that, he immediately goes down. Yeah, now they just walked to Roche. Yeah. They have rabbits. T TFT threat. actually burned their own smoke trying to come for a fight on the top lane. They're just nowhere near it. Yep. Daytime strikes us again, a minute and a half until night. Maybe the only thing that slows him down because Unison Army just wants a blink. He wants a kill. They'll get the glimpse onto the Tide Hunter, but it's not the hero they want. Yeah. That's 20 armor and 1900 oh, HP. They can't kill that. They can't kill anybody, Toby. They can they can kill a Wind Ranger if she, if they glimpse her into the ultimate of Disruptor. Then they can kill somebody. But that's the only one. Well, that's staying positive. I, you know me, man. Always think about the underdog way to come back. Yep. Even if it is delirious to think this. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, it's the same story as last game where it felt like the core that actually synergizes with Ogre and the one that's going to be relied upon to be the final tribe's win condition is the one having the worst game. A blank call. Yunusafami went in for the Ancients. Disrupt the Storm is down, but Yunusafam, well, the best thing you can hope for is just death. He helped kill off all the Ancients. That won't come. They buy back, they look for the opening. Remember, Tide Ravage has not been used. They lose a beam through the Ogre, and there's your call onto two. Maybe Ice 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 goes down. No, he still gets the Ravage off. The Axeman will do the work. The Mushi has stood his ground this entire fight. He'll get the die back kill onto the Axe, and now they can focus on the big core onto Era. No shackle condition for him, but it won't matter. He's out of mana, out of life, and probably out of hope as down on the sidelines, they're two big cores yep. for over. 40 seconds. Luna's doing so much damage in these fights, as is Timber. Lifestealer Rage, half a second cooldown. He gets ravaged. He dies in the duration of the stun. And I mean, that's just probably game. You cannot kill Timber. Yeah. He's going to tank tier four. He doesn't give a damn. Why would he? If they get rid of this tower as well, the supports can't come in close. Like where Pablo is, this can't happen right now. I'm even guessing, it. I, I'm questioning if it's allowed to happen now. Because these glaives bounce through, the creep wave's gone. Axe will come back to life again in three seconds time. They TP forward. Frost looks for an opening. Here comes your glimpse as a timber chain away. They do pull Mushi back in again. He does not have that mana style available. The shackle out. Silence as well. Frost not where he wants to be. Mushi actually trying to dodge the glimpse with the mana style. Finally, he brings these illusions into the mid and they're just attacking into the rack. Maybe attacking into the melee, wow. not the target they want. Pablo! <laughs> oh, well. Well, he's dead. Unison Farm, his smoke's gonna break, jabs, shackle, just misses onto the back three. It's a shame for him that shackle doesn't work on the pole, but it's a good oldie from Hansken. Hits Unison Farm right in the middle of it, but they still kill him off. It's a trade-off one for one, the Stone Gaze doing its work, you will set the up for the Timbersaw. You need a little bit of extra space once the Open Wounds was out, and Infest into error. Damn that pop damage, it comes so quick, so fast, so hard. TFT, they can't sustain through this, they can't survive through this. And I got a funny feeling they're headed into the bottom position. The lower bracket, fourth position of their group, because Mineski, they are unstoppable. Oh, yeah. This game's pretty over. And it just came down to the hero with the real wave clear that is just behind. And as soon as you're behind, Timber takes the tier two mid and top by nine minutes. Yeah. Collects a couple core kills. Like the moment Life Stealer TPs from the free lane bottom to top and dies at level five, his game's over. Medusa's game's over the moment his tower dies. And they're both trying to play catch up, but they don't have the kits to do so. And in the meantime, you got three cores on Mineski that all eat creep waves like Cap and Crunch. They're taking a 22 minute Roshan. Moo can tank through everything they've got. The Tidehunter is building a pipe as well. Yep. So any kind of magical damage which you thought you were getting up is no longer going to be there. 
And that's just a uh, perfect. you finish the Solar Crest first. It's not always about how much damage can you deal to your enemies, it's how much can they do to you. And in this game, TFT never really had the answer to take down a Tide and a Timber. They can get one at a time, maybe, but it, it just buys so much space for Mushi, and now he can be this orbital Yamato cannon and just walk up, hit the racks with that new BKB and Aegis, and how this do you gonna stop him? There's going to fight mid. Isai Science has Ravage up and running. So Moon to the front lines, already has 25 charges of reactive armor, so they can't even burst him. But they'll give it a shot. Frost attacking him. They glimpse Moon a little bit closer, but where's <laughs> your follow-up? He doesn't care about this. Dude, he's, he's, a tick actually he's a tickle me elbow right now, <laughs> and his batteries are full. And Ice Ice is giving him the solar crest. Like, is this, this, this the double up? Like, how do they even battle into him? He is a Yule's too, so if they ever blow Disruptor ult, op gets open, Moon's in a poor spot. Goes. Yep, exactly. Buys them the time to now counter initiate with, hmm, I don't know, right. Ravage? Unison Farm, they're ready for the pop damage. They have an infested life stealer inside the axe. I'm going to cling to Hope. Yeah, <laughs> no. Hope is gone. Hope is totally gone. He went for the call jump. It does not happen. Maybe it's just the bait. But then again, you also burn Stone Gaze. Moon will now turn his attention towards Era. They'll fortify the structures. Unfortunately, that only protects creeps, not the heroes. And then another jump. Use the bump. This one he got onto the Timbersaw with the pop out. But there's that defensive Yule Scepter we were talking about. Ice 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 is waiting it out. He's still Still has Ravage. He's staying in range to Solar Crest Moon. That's what this feels like. He can just let it go. Just like go. Let it go. And that's exactly it. Era. Down he falls. Buyback is available. May as well use it. Maneski, they're farming your fountain. They're taking the tier 4 towers. Mushi remembers objective based gaming. Not to mention he's enjoying the Glaive Bounce out. Ice, Ice, Ice. A little bit of trouble for him. A couple of one charges are available, but Frost is sticking on the tail of him, but then the Shackle units are fun. No! A fraction of a second too early on the dunk, but GG, well played. Maneski will 2 0 There's not even 25 minutes on the clock to take game two and get themselves a matchup in the lower part of this GSL star bracket. Yeah. Um, they go up against VGJ Storm now. I feel like I would end up just repeating myself if I were to break that game down any further. But All right, then let's not break it down. Let's just say, let's stop talking, Kyle. Okay, you want to talk? Talk. No, it's fine. Okay, fine. I don't need to say anything. Production, take us to a break. We're coming back in just a bit. A final deciding match, BGJ Storm versus Mineski. Should be a cracker.